good water, good water, good water. Hello, Internet. Troy Reeves here, your friendly, upcoming neighborhood music nerd. I'm gonna make that my headline now, I guess. Sorry, Stanley. And welcome back to my my music vlog or blog, whatever whatever you people call it nowadays. I don't really keep up with this. Um, this is my second video, second day of my beginning best of of 2011 my first sets of videos of this of this channel and uh my again i'm following up on my favorite albums of the year one of my favorite songs of the year basically i'll run it down the same way 50 songs uh mtv music of countdown still formula like i i i name every song and maybe touchstone on most of them i will run down the top 10 run down the top 10 reason why I play stuff as high as they did. And let's get started because I don't want to waste any of your time because I know you have precious time. And I'm going to start with number 50. These next three are radio pop songs that normally a lot of people kind of will judge me for but hell I like pop poppy pop songs when they're great and number 50 is definitely one of them. Rolling in the Deep from Adele. Number 49 Countdown Beyonce and number 48 Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. I'm Again, I like pop songs when they're done right, and these are right. Another, I don't need to get into it anymore. Um, I'm at number forty-seven. I put Armor Fiat from Watched from Watched Out. Again, I probably pronounced that wrong, so I apologize up front ahead of time. Um, at number forty-six, I put I Don't Want Love from The Antlers, a great song. Eat East Harlem at number forty-four with, from Beaut. At number forty-four, I put Circular. From My Morning Jacket, a very a great opener. At number 43, I put Make My from The Roots' latest album, with featuring Big Crit. At number 42, I put Turtleneck and Chain, Turtleneck and Chain from The Lonely Alley, featuring Snoop Doggy Dog. At number 41, I put Country Shit, the remake version from Big Crit, featuring Ludacris. At number 40, I put Dan Brandon Cox's alternate prop side project at Atlas Sounds song Mona Lisa and number 39 I put Down by the Water from the Decemberance and number 38 I put Abducted from Colts mostly because Go Outside been out for at least a couple years already and number 37 I put Romance by Wild by Wild Flag at number 36 I put Queen of Hearts at number 435 I put Walking Far From Home from Iron Wine, a great opening track, very subtle but very beautiful at the same time. At number 34, I put New Beat from Tourna Your Mo, very great kind of slow upbeat song for the for the ages. At number 43, I at number 33, my bad, make some noise from the BC Boys. I mean, it's BC Boys being the BC Boys. What more do you want, people? Seriously. At number 32, I put the words that make it murder. From PJ's Harvey, very good song on that one. And at number thirty-one, I put the Arctic Monkeys song "Pile Driver Watts," which also was featured in Submarine. Very, very great songwriting, proving kind of I haven't heard the Arctic Monkeys sound this good since probably their first album back in two thousand six. At number thirty, I put "Space Is Only Noise." If you can see from Nicholas Jar, very good, weird electronic, kind of subtle dance song. Very, very good. At number 29, I put Last Night the Jetty from Animal Collective's lead scene me member, Panda Bears. Panda Bear. At number 38, at number 38, I put Nona Kane from All Futures Frank Ocean. At number 30, at number 37, I put The Raptures, How Deep Is Your Love. Even though I wasn't a big fan of this album, I did like this single a lot. I kept on replaying it and was the reason why I kind of had high hopes for it and kind of was disappointed. At number 36, I put Yonkers from Odd Futures, Title of the Creator. I know I'm kind of shocked that I actually put it that high because I'm not the biggest Odd Future fan and I didn't like Goblin at all, but this definitely was a high point because it was bold, it was kind of different at the time, and I mean, yeah, it was out there, and mostly the music video helped too. At number 35, I put Video Games from another controversial artist, Lauder De Ray. She, again, very different, but very beautiful at the same time. Great hook. Really strong songwriting. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, I know she's getting controversy, but I do have to give credit when the music gets right. At number 34, I put Will Do from TV on the radio. At number 30, 
30, uh, 23, sorry about that, Undercover of Darkness from The Strokes. At number t 22, I put The Wall from Yuck. At number 21, I put Radiohead's Lotus Flower. I mean, now we can all dance like idiots like Tom York because Tom York made it cool. At number 20, I, yeah, top 20, woo, yeah, top 20. I got uh, Jesus Fever from Kurt Vell. Vell, man, I am bad at pronouncing today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> at number 19, I put Walk from Food Fighters. Again, I'm not the biggest Food Fighter fan, but I did like this album quite a bit. Made my albums cut, and definitely Walk was a very strong single. If you just went balls out rock and roll, highly recommend that. And also the other song, which is our number 18 song, which is Lonely Boy. The, from the Black Keys, from their latest one, Lonely, from El Camino, again, Black Keys, kind of sounding like back, like the raw Black Keys back a couple years ago, and, that, and especially with Danger Mouse producing, very solid track, and number 17, I got Ice Cream from Battles, very fun, poppy, out there song, Hook, I, I mean, I still am jamming out to it today. At number 15, I got Vomit from Girls. Very great, kind of Pink Floyd S song. Epic from them. I love it from the first time I listened to it when I first listened to the album. At number 15, I put California from EMA. At number 14, I put Need You Now from Cut Copy. At number tw at number 13, I put Marvin's Room from Drake. This is, I kind of feel like Drake kind of, even though it's nowhere near Runaway, I kind of feel like it is kind of somewhat is to Drake because it kind of shows he entered, he admits he's kind of a, kind of for the fame, but also he shows an innocent side. Like, I mean, who never, like, got drunk and wanted to call their ex-girlfriend and say, man, forget that, man. Like, what? I know you still think about us. I mean, it's a very, very personal song and it works. At number 12, I put Bad As Me from Tom Watts. I love this song. One of the main reasons why I love the album is because it basically, Tom Watts kind of looks back to his, kind of his 19 album career at this point. Well, counting this one will be 20. And realize he was the bad boy music. Like, his voice isn't, like, the greatest, but he knows, like, because it's rowdy. And his music is weird and noisy. Like, he is kind of the bad boy of music. And, hell, sometimes we need it. It works for him so far, and it works for us. At number 11, I put N-Words in Paris from Jay-Z and Kanye. This is just two rap stars just clearly having fun with this. They're not taking this seriously at all, just having fun, but with some very out absurd lyricism, but still a very fun pop rap song that just shows two rap legends just, having, just going at it and having fun. Top 10, everybody. We're almost there real estate with it's real i mean this one is a ve again very subtle great rock song i just love how it's very fast it gets straight to the point and it's very enjoyable throughout at number nine it's cut put from destroyer a very long nice chill song very nice i'm sorry i'm not getting very descriptive but i'm trying to speed it up at uh, number eight i put bizarre bizarre by tug yard Tune Yard. Wow, I'm very bad at pronouncing right now. But yeah, um, great. Very out there. Very So much genre mashing that it's totally a mind blown when you first listen to it. And it gets, gets, gets stuck in your head each time you listen. I mean, it's like, don't be, be, don't be, be. Sorry. <laughs> at number seven, I got the Orlando Scream from James Blake. This one definitely was the reason why I, like, what, I love, fell in love with his oven right at the get go. Um, I love how it slowly builds up to this, what he's kind of inferring this on when he's like, I'm falling, I'm falling, but like, might as well fall in. Like, he, it, like the background with his beats and everything slowly build up to this big climax of when you, he does fall and you're like, damn, that's how a song like kind of that caliber should be made. At number six, I put County Line by Cass McCrum. I mean, a a very, I feel that the album was kind of underrated. I did like it, but it didn't make my top list. However, this song, I'm just, I'm in love with it. It's a very subtle ballad in a way. Like I haven't really, there's not that many. I feel senior songwriters that are that great, kind of did great ballads like this anymore. And definitely this one 
kind of stood out to me, especially of a year of really great songs. And number five, Heltness's Blues from Fleet Foxes. I mean, what else can I say? What else can I say about this? Great song, right from the get-go. You just when you first hear it, you know you were in for a treat. And number four, I put Cruel from St. Vincent. I fell in love with this upbeat but really dark song from from St. Vincent. I just love how like it does sound it starts sounding innocent, but once like the distorted guitar and you kinda hear the lyrics the lyrics, you kinda see how dark this really turns out to be and I find it lovely. At number three I put Midnight City from M eighty three. I just a get up and dance song of the year definitely goes to this song. I just love how it just that that drop at twenty second twenty seconds in just when it goes all out crazy. I just love it. Especially we need more sax solos in the world, guys. Just saying. And number two, I got the actually the Grammy nominated song Holistein from Bonnie Bear. Again, I love this song. I love this album. I mean, I love it right now. I have it right here, but. I mean, I don't know what else can I say about it, besides I want it to beat Rolling in the Deep for Grammy of the Year, for Song of the Year and Record of the Year. Suck it. And my favorite Song of the Year, kind of a surprise if you think it was Bonnie Iver, it's Art of Almost from Wilco. Again, the reason why I love this song so much, it shows the creative state that Wilco is now, like the freedom it has, because they can, they can come out with a seven minute song that slowly turns out to be one awesome jam session, but it works, it works, and it just kind of sets the tone for what this album is, even though it's kind of the, it's the longest track, well, actually the second longest track of the album, and actually probably the more weird, the weirdest out of the album, but show shows actually Wilco at his best and even at one point you're like wait this is Wilco man Wilco sounds kick ass well and that's my list I mean back to, back to business I guess I will probably follow you follow up with this later uh, with another video probably tomorrow if not uh, two days from now and um yeah uh, what like again this is my opinion so if you have a problem with it I'm sorry, but you gotta suck it. Um, and also, but however, I do want to know what's your favorite albums of the year. Let me know. Just hit me at the comment section, and also uh, follow me on Twitter and Tumblr to kind of keep up with the music business. But until then, keep listening and keep your ears open, music fans. 